Tonight, a plan is in the works to help house homeless senior citizens. City Council votes unanimously to fund downtown bike lanes, but despite the approval, sentiment is split. And the past couple of days have brought colder temperatures, so is there warmer weather in the forecast? Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Funds meant to protect San Antonio's only source of drinking water might actually be shifting to a new transportation improvement initiative. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is proposing the use of an already existing one eight cent sales tax to go toward VIA instead. The Edwards Aquifer Protection Program is set to expire in 2021. Mayor Ron Nirenberg would like to shift its use. This is a sales tax that's been approved by voters several times. He says that improvements to transportation problems in our area are equally as important. I will be working doggedly hard to make sure that there are funding mechanisms available to us to continue to protect our water supply. We have to. It's, it's an extremely important initiative, uh, an extremely important program. The mayor says funding to protect the water system is available federally and through the state, but that is not the case for public transportation improvements. As the city of San Antonio is working to address homelessness in our community through their strategic plan, a local nonprofit organization hopes it can focus its help on a particularly vulnerable population. The Housing First Community Coalition is converting a piece of land on the east side to a campus to house seniors who are homeless. Tiffany Huerta shows us what the campus would look like. That site used to be the Town Twin Theater in the 70s and 80s. So we just thought we would honor its history and name it Town Twin Village. This 17 acre piece of land will turn into this, a combination of RVs, tiny homes and apartments, a place where older people who are homeless can live and receive support services. This is Dietrich and this up here is for RVs for maybe as many as 35. And then a, a leasing office and wraparound services, a community center. And this will be a multi-purpose from a, a church service to a movie to a concert. President of the board, Mark Wittig, says they are modeling it after a project in Austin called Community First Village that is operated by the outreach ministry Mobile Loaves and Fishes. But how will people who are homeless afford this? Because of their age, some of them will be on Social Security. Some will have, uh, maybe they're on disability or maybe they're a veteran. Um, uh, and in some cases, uh, they may be uh, working on site. Wittig says they've already raised $2 million, but their goal is to raise $20 million. You've got to bring water and power into the property. It's on the street, but it's not inside. So a lot of infrastructure work, architectural engineering, goes into play at this point. Recently, the San Antonio City Council approved a zoning change, allowing them to move forward. We asked for a zoning variance where you can have services as well as housing mixed together. Wittig says more than 200 people could live in this new space. District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan sent us this statement. In part, quote, this will have a magnificent impact by providing housing to our city's homeless population, one of the most vulnerable communities in the city of San Antonio, end quote. For some longtime residents, this project comes as a surprise. Say it's already been planted and probably they're going to do it regardless of what we think. You know, and I guess it'd be all right. But the Housing First Community Coalition says this development will not pose a security risk. We will have a, some form of security uh, on the front part closest to uh, Dietrich will be open because that's a, be an open community center. But just behind it will be gated and so people who go in and out. But it's not a police state, it's just that we don't want anybody, just everybody walking in there and, and creating trouble. Wittig says there is also a space for people who have been doing service at Catholic Worker House, a place that already helps homeless people in San Antonio. What type of feel are you all hoping for when people move in here? That they're home, they have their place, and, and they're not alone. Wittig says the nonprofit is still fundraising for the space. Right now, we don't know when the project will be completed. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. Last month, we shared some compelling stories about people who live on the streets of San Antonio. It was a one-hour special 
called In the Shadows. If you missed that hour, you can watch the full special right now on our website at ksat.com slash homeless. The San Antonio City Council has approved $6 million for a protected bike lane downtown on Avenue B and Alamo Street. The vote today was unanimous, but not everyone was satisfied with it. Some of the dais, including Mayor Ron Nirenberg, were frustrated that bike lanes weren't included on Lower Broadway. Some city transportation officials say that the stretch of Broadway inside I-35 is too small to accommodate them. A recent traffic study seemed to back that up. That's where the Avenue B and Alamo lanes would come in, running parallel to Broadway. On this dais, it feels like we've heard every bureaucratic excuse in the book to building anything other than a car-centric road in the heart of downtown. What we've offered here is a good option. It's a safe option. It's a funded option. The project is meant to complement the upgrades to the Broadway corridor that voters approved as part of the 2017 bond project. A manhunt for a Marine wanted for murder is now underway. The Walmart in El Paso, where 22 people were shot and killed over the summer, is now back open. And help is on the way in Venice because of historic flooding that continues there. This is tonight's 9 at 9. In Virginia, the search continues for an alleged Marine deserter wanted in the murder of his mother's boyfriend. Michael Brown is considered armed and dangerous. All public schools in the Roanoke area were closed today as a precaution. Brown has not been seen since reportedly knocking on his grandmother's window. The rest of his family has spoken out publicly, urging Brown to turn himself in. A local man sentenced today for the murder of a UTSA student back in 2012. Leandre Hill handed a 40 year prison sentence. Hill's attorney said racial slurs were used during the confrontation that led to the shooting death of Randall Perkins. The issue of sudden passion was in the jury charge and it was the focus of arguments by both sides. I'm sure every one of you has been called a, a name that has hurt your feelings, that has um, upset you. That's not adequate cause. The El Paso Walmart, where 22 people were killed over the summer, reopened today. The store has new security measures in place, including cameras and gates at the entrances. An El Paso Strong banner was also placed there at the front of the store. Here in our area, multiple food trucks and businesses all damaged by two explosions that happened this morning near Texas State University. <laughs> And then we look out the window and we just see this huge fireball. No one was hurt. We still don't know what caused the explosion. The government in Italy has declared a state of emergency in Venice after the city was flooded due to the highest tide in 50 years. At its highest, uh, the water here reached something around six foot. That is an extraordinary amount of water. A decree was approved that includes about $21 million in financial aid to be used to help the city recover. Farmers protesting in the streets of Germany today used their tractors. Hamburg police say about 4,000 tractors were either in the city or on roads leading to the city to create roadblocks. Farmers are demanding fewer regulations. In Michigan, dozens of students, school staff and volunteers made sure a high school football game wasn't canceled because of weather. They showed up with shovels and snow blowers to clear snow off the field and the bleachers. NASA has discovered a spike in trace amounts of oxygen on Mars. They say the spike is likely the result of a geological process, but they still don't know the exact cause. Motorola is bringing back the Razer flip phone, but there's an upgrade here. The new version has a foldable screen. There's also a second quick view screen there on the front. The new Razer will cost $1,500 and will hit stores in January 2020. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. Yeah, 1500 I was going to say, did we hear that right? Uh, we did. Uh, $1,500. For a flip phone. For a flip phone. But it's a With a foldable yeah. screen. I still don't understand how those work. I think I it probably turns in into person. one cohesive screen yeah. once opened. I've heard they break, but you know. <laughs> Guess we'll find Don't out. Don't they all? Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, if you try hard enough, mm -hmm. they sure do. All right, so let's talk about the forecast. Cold, wet, dreary out there today, but... Warming up. All right. And getting brighter outside. And actually, I have some good news here, too. So every Thursday, we get the newest drought monitor. So take a look at this. This is actually 30 days ago. And notice, 
in mid-October, the extreme drought across a good portion of South Texas. That's that red color. All right, so let's fast forward to today and look at those improvements. Once we saw that big shift in our weather pattern, after our hottest September on record, we got into October and we started to see the change. And now into mid-November, we've shrunken that red area down to just a few little spots and that's it. So improvements in terms of the drought monitor across our area. So not everybody had rainfall today, but we got it really where it counts in terms of the aquifer, particularly the J17 well. So we like to see the rain in northern Bear County over the recharge zone, and it's even nice to have it over the contributing zone, but we got it really got most of the rainfall right where it counts in northern Bear County, right in the recharge zone. And there were some measurements of a half an inch there at the airport. Not quite as much, about a quarter of an inch, 49 degrees. That was our high temperature. We started the day at 41 and we only made it to 49 by the afternoon. So we ro rose a whopping eight degrees with the dampness and the clouds. Right now we're at 44, dew point of 39, calm wind. It's nice to have a calm breeze outside. Kerrville 39, Fredericksburg 37, along with Austin and Pleasanton now at 45. Pretty similar across the state. You go from 39 in Amarillo to 51 in Brownsville. So we're still feeling the effects of the cold front that recently affected us. All right, so take a look at satellite and radar. The shower activity moving eastward. It's all caused by this upper level disturbance, this upper level swirl that is now basically in southern Louisiana and parts of East Texas there. That's going to continue to push eastward, move out of here and be replaced by a big blue H. So this upper level high, that's going to be pressing in and influencing our weather tomorrow and then again on Saturday. So we're looking at sunny and warmer days ahead. Yeah, we'll have some high thin clouds streaming in from the Pacific as we get into Saturday afternoon, but overall a fairly sunny day. So tomorrow total sunshine 35 in the morning. 56 at noon, mid 60s for the high temperature. Saturday and Sunday, a good amount of sunshine with a little extra cloud cover, I think, layered up in the sky on Sunday, but still a beautiful, comfortable day. 67 over the weekend for high temperatures. And then into next week, it looks like we'll be back in the 70s, low to mid 70s. So our weather pattern, although it has been active and unseasonably cold, it's flattening out a bit. It's calming down at least for the next seven days. Another reason to love Friday and Saturday. Yeah, right. Very different from last <laughs> Friday, too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. A state lawmaker from Eagle Pass has admitted that he dropped an envelope containing several bags of cocaine at an airport in Austin. That's according to the Associated Press. Representative Pancho Nevarez is saying that he will now seek drug treatment. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety, Nevarez was caught on security cameras dropping that envelope back on September 6th. The Texas Tribune reports that an arrest warrant has been issued for him for felony drug possession charges. Nevada's announced last month that he would not be seeking re-election. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. home tonight an outbreak of a contagious disease that could affect your dog. It's called canine distemper. The Animal Care Services Division says that there is an outbreak that is happening right now. Canine distemper is a disease that impacts the dog's breathing, its stomach and its nerves, just to name a few. Symptoms include the fever, nose discharge and coughing. Biggest thing that we're really pushing for is everybody needs if you own a if you own a dog or a cat, Make sure that those animals are vaccinated appropriately. Uh, it's kind of the herd mentality. If we vaccinate the herd, the entire population becomes much safer. 
ACS says the disease is not a danger to humans or other pets like your cats. Another way to keep your dog protected is to make sure they don't wander off into areas that you're not familiar with. Meanwhile, ACS is reporting a high number of euthanizations this week. They said that cold weather led to an influx of animals in shelters. A total of 34 dogs were euthanized between Tuesday and Wednesday. Animal Care Services says they only opt for euthanizing an animal once all other options have been exhausted. You can find more information on adoptions right now on our website at ksat.com. Let's turn now to some of tonight's biggest stories. Two teenagers killed, three others hurt, and a California high school shooting today. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office says the 16-year-old suspect shot himself in the head after the attack and is now in grave condition. No motive has been named so far. Police say today was the gunman's 16th birthday. Another person has entered the crowded Democratic field of candidates running for president. Former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick officially announced his bid for president today. Patrick is the 18th candidate vying for the nomination. Nearly all toddlers in the U.S. are eating too much added sugar. The American Heart Association recommends that children younger than two years old not have any added sugars. But a new study found that 98 percent of toddlers do. Researchers found foods with the most added sugar were fruit drinks, baked goods, and flavored yogurt. The study, however, did find that overall sugar consumption for toddlers and infants has gone down. It has stood on the city's east side for decades. Generations of families and parishioners have worshipped at the Mount Zion First Baptist Church on Martin Luther King Drive. In tonight's Throwback Thursday, RJ Marquez takes a look at this church that has been a longtime pillar of our community. For more than a century, Mount Zion First Baptist Church has served the San Antonio community and opened its doors to those in need. The church was founded back in 1871 uh, by five uh, former slaves and a white minister. The first Mount Zion Church was a modest one-room building located on Santo Street. The church was there for a long time until 1924. Uh, when they marched from Santo Street to this current location and they built this church. Decades later, the Reverend Claude Black Jr. became pastor and led the church to national prominence in the National Baptist Convention. Pastor Black would become a city and civil rights icon who had ties with legendary activists such as Dr. Martin Luther King, Ralph Abernathy, Whitney Young, Thurgood Marshall, and Barbara Jordan. It was through that connection that this church was involved and so much so that uh, Reverend Black became a member of the city council and was uh, one of the first African American, well, he was the first African American uh, mayor pro tem to serve in the city. The church played a significant role in the civil rights movement in San Antonio and was a precursor to the annual MLK March. It was started by a former member here, the Reverend uh, R.A. Callis, uh, senior, and uh, he started the march in 1968 right after Dr. King had been shot. Mount Zion was a beacon of faith in the area, but in 1974, an arsonist set the church on fire. Everything was destroyed at, except for one Bible. One Bible survived and we have it encased downstairs. And the church was rebuilt within a year. The people said, we will not let uh, racist and prejudiced people uh, take our joy. The church experienced tremendous growth after it was rebuilt. It continues to serve community members no matter what race or social status. The community that was supported most of the 148 years does not exist. But this community that's here now, we want to serve this community, which uh, is more diverse than the original congregation was and has a different set of needs. The church is set to open a new facility to tend to the needs of children and seniors. It also has a strong mission in other countries and a food bank and clothing ministry to ensure people who may be voiceless can be heard. We're here to do God's will and not just to look good or, or to say, look how long we've been here. We want people to say, look what God is doing. Throwback Thursday is just one of the series that we feature exclusively here on the news at nine. Here's a look at our lineup of some of the others that we have. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when Steve Spreester joins us for an all new edition of Spree Thoughts. I'm Alicia Barrera and these are your weekend picks and for this weekend we have a lot of fun lined up for you for Saturday. Let's start with the outdoors with Solar Fest.
It's an outdoor festival that's all about celebrating renewable energy and energy efficiency in our city. There will be live music, food trucks, artists, and of course activities that will help the kids learn. The fun starts at 10 a.m. at Hemisphere Park. Swing by downtown and take the budding artist in your house to the fifth annual Teen Arts Fest happening here at the Central Library. The event is going to be featuring art displays, short films, improv comedy, music, art workshops, and much more. Everything is made by teens and the best part, the event is free and runs from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And finally, for the kids who love to sing and dance, well, they're in luck because Nick Jr. Live Move to the Music comes to town. The live stage show features characters from your favorite TV shows, including Bubble Guppies, Paw Patrol, Dora the Explorer, Shimmer and Shine, and Blue's Clues. There's multiple performances all weekend at the Tobin Center, and tickets start at $23. For more information on these events and everything happening around town this weekend, you can head over to ksat.com and search Weekend Picks. For the Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12. Another development tonight in the city's back and forth effort with electric scooter companies. Late this evening, the city announced that rideshare company Lyft would be removing all of its electric scooters from San Antonio and no longer plans to operate here. This announcement comes just after city staff recommended that Lyft be one of three scooter operators allowed in San Antonio. The city says that staff members will continue to negotiate with the other two operators, Lime and Razor, and they will revise their recommendation to the city council. They'll present that revised recommendation before the issue is up for a city council vote on December 12th. Let's go to our website now to find out what is trending today with Ferris Sabawi. Well, Myra, it's been really cold lately. I don't know if you know. It's been yeah, it's, it's been, been a cold a one out there. Touch chilly. It yeah. sure has. And you know the good thing is, is if you're kind of wishing for a white Christmas, we kind of have a nice update for you on our website. Today. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the the ice rink that's being constructed at Travis Park for the holiday season is uh, the construction is underway. Oh, on I it actually right now. forgot about this. That's yeah. right. This is coming just for the holidays. Right? Yeah. The Rotary Club is actually doing it. Um, and uh, you know the proceeds are, are going to go help a lot of different cool initiatives. Um, so it's for a good cause. But yeah, this will actually be up starting December 2nd and it'll run past uh, or it'll run until January. They're actually expecting more than 25,000 people uh, by the end of it oh, to, wow. to be out there. Is so. it open through the new year or is it just through the yeah, end of the month? Yeah, one of the other great things about the story on our website, actually great plug, Myra, um, <laughs> is we have all the hours on the website, including on the holidays, and it will be open on wow. Christmas and New Year's and, and all okay. that good stuff. So there's a lot going on there and uh, you can catch that at ksat.com. That's what you call a push to the website. That's right. right. That's right. Now moving on into some other business, uh, a satanic group here in San Antonio is doing something for a good cause, Myra. I just, I thought we had to talk about it. I, uh, I could see this story getting a lot of clicks. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of uh, e excitement um, a about uh, this type of drive, but it's called menstruating with Satan, you know? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm so not going to get into that too much. Well, I don't think you have to. I think a lot of us know what you're talking about, but uh -huh. explain uh -huh. the drive, the charity, what they're doing. Uh, periods are just uh, a reality for a lot of people who uh, are sometimes less fortunate, not able to afford the products that they need. So they've set up drop off locations in a lot of uh, local tattoo shops, things like that. Uh, where you can drop off these uh, female hygiene products and they're going to give them to local abuse and homeless shelters uh, oh, okay. to pass out to people in need. So, uh, you know, maybe they get a bad rap, but I got to say they, they uh, have some good charity drives in mind. And if it's something that you want to take part in, like Ferris said, it's for a good cause, runs through December 3rd. That's right. That's right. right. And our last story uh, of the day today for trending, and this has been one of my favorite stories, <laughs> is uh, Quilty the Cat. So uh, in Houston, uh, the Friends for Live Animal Rescue and Adoption Organization posted uh, a hilarious Facebook post about Quilty the cat. And uh, Quilty has been in a little bit of trouble recently, Myra, for letting out the senior cats. Uh, and apparently Quilty does this often. It's and not a one-time thing. Quilty has um, some facial expressions that are near and dear to my heart. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Quilty, uh, we got some great photos uh, in this story <laughs> of Quilty just being very upset about being placed on lockdown. Hasn't Quilty found a home or is close to so, finding a yeah, home? Yeah, so Quilty was actually, uh, soon after uh, Quilty made headlines for being the vigilante uh, for these cats in the shelter, uh, He's actually on a on a sleepover with a potential owner, so uh, uh, okay. we don't know how that sleepover went. I hope it went good, but who knows? Quilty might have escaped. 
<laughs> so if they have any other animals uh, in kennels, maybe they're free yeah, roaming yeah. the house now. Well, and this is great. Actually, the previous owner told the shelter before you know they had to give up Quilty. They said, uh, "Watch out because uh, he's known to open doors." So he's he's he has a habit of this. He's an escape artist. I mean, he, he understands his talents. Yeah, there's been a lot of love for him on social media. A lot of like free Quilty hashtags and things <laughs> like that. So. Uh, I love it. Uh, I, I, I wish he was my cat, but I could not contain him. That's All right. for sure. Quilty is busting out of there, it sounds like. <laughs> that's right. All right. Thanks, Ferris. Absolutely. We'll be right back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. IBM is getting better at the weather. It's launching a new global weather model capable of forecasting down to two square miles, all run, of course, off a of supercomputer. IBM says Graph will provide the most accurate forecasting models ever for the entire world. IBM bought the parent company of the Weather Channel three years ago. And Ford plans to start taking pre-orders for its electric SUV dubbed the Mustang Mach-E. Reservations open Sunday when Ford debuts the vehicle in LA. The new crossover has styling inspired by the iconic Mustang design. No word yet on pricing. And Daimler planning to cut costs at its Mercedes-Benz unit amid tougher emissions rules in Europe eating into overall profits. Daimler admitting that it needs to sell more electric cars to meet the increasingly hardline emissions rules in the EU. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Scholler from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. That does it for KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next time. Good night.